What's going on guys, Tower Number 9 here and welcome to the Saturday Spoiler Review. Today we are taking a look at the last week's uh, preview cards for Star Wars Limited TCG Twilight of the Republic. First up we have Luminara Nduli, Soft Spoken Master. Uh, she is a 7 cost Vigilance Heroism Ground Unit, 4 and 9 with the Force Jedi and Republic traits. She has Coordinate Grit, uh, so while you control 3 or more units she gets plus 1 power for each damage on her and when played choose a base, heal 1 damage from it for each unit you control. I think the healing here is interesting but is not not going to be all that strong unless you have a large number of units and that's simply because when i see something like this i compare it to let's say cargo juggernaut so cargo juggernaut here um which i'm hopefully going to hopefully going to bring up shortly is a six cost four six with shielded and when played if you control another vigilance unit heal four damage from your base so cargo juggernaut six for a four six shielded and, you know, we can compare that to Luminara and Dooley 7 for a 4-9 with Coordinate Grit. Cargo Juggernaut stats are not that much worse and in some situations actually better. And the healing just requires one Vigilance unit to heal four, whereas Luminara requires a whole bunch of units. Now, to be fair, she can potentially hit harder with Grit and she does have the Force Jedi and Republic traits, which I think are going to be quite relevant. But I'm not immediately enthralled with Luminara and Dooley's overall, uh, overall profile there. Uh, compared to other options, uh, you know, a similar, very heavy healing sort of option would be the, um, you know, we, we can look at cards like Redemption Medical Frigate that are going to heal quite a bit regardless of other things on the board. And in, in my mind, that might be better. So, yeah, we'll see what happens here. I have a weird, weird little piece of hair, but, you know, we're just going to look a little weird. That's fine. Um, let's go on to the next uh, card here, Self-Destruct, 2 cost, Aggression Villainy, defeat a friendly unit if you do deal 4 damage to a unit. So, this card is open fire, except it costs 1 less, and you have to defeat a friendly unit to use it. Um, I think this is pretty bad in some ways, because under normal circumstances, I don't think having to defeat a unit is worth costing 1 less. Now, the big exception that I'm seeing to this, though, is situations where either you can create a large number of token units. So let's say you have a deck that can make a whole bunch of battle droids. This could be useful there. And additionally, I can see it uh, being relevant with units that have strong when defeated effect, where you might want to trigger that ability, defeating a friendly unit in order to uh, pull the, pull this play off. So an example of that would be, let's say that you have a super laser technician and played it to the ground arena and your opponent went to space. Using the self-destruct on your super laser technician can remove remove the tech, uh, get you that resource, and clear an opposing space unit, which to me seems like it could well be pretty good. Next up, the Wolfpack Escort. One cost, two, one, space unit, cunning heroism. Uh, when played, you may return a friendly non-leader, non-vehicle unit to its owner's hand, and it is a two, one, uh, Republic vehicle and fighter traits. So it was previewed by the Johto cast. And 2-1 isn't the greatest stat line, but it's not terrible either for a one-cost unit. And the when-played ability can bounce a friendly card, allowing you to potentially reuse a when-played ability, put a shield on something, just recover some damage. few options there. Um, and But it's worth noting that the Wolfpack Escort says you may. So if you don't have a unit you want to bounce, you don't have to. And that is a relevant advantage compared to the Pirated Starfighter, which has suffered a bit from being a card where you have to activate that, uh, that bounce ability. All right, next up, Quinlan Voss, Sticking the Landing. He is a uh, he is a leader unit, or he is a leader. Uh, when you play a unit, you may exhaust this leader. If you do deal one damage to an enemy unit that costs the same as the played unit, and he is Cunning Heroism, when you deploy him, he is a 3-7 with the Force Jedi and Republic traits who deploys on five resources. And then he has, when you play a unit, you may deal one damage to an enemy unit that costs the same as or less than the played unit. So a better version of his first ability. Um, the first one where it damages uh, if the cost is equal, I think is often going to be relevant, at least if the meta looks like what it what it does right now with one cost units because we've seen cards like the uh, you know Greedo is a one cost unit with one HP so if the opponent plays Greedo and you use Quinlan Voss to play a one cost unit of your own you get to clear Greedo um, but we'll have to see how this goes and it could well be that this ping damage ends up having a lot of value he does also have those Force Jedi and Republic traits which could well end up uh, end up having some nice payoffs as well. 
Chancellor Palpatine, wartime chancellor, forecast double cunning ground unit 2-6 with the Republican official traits. This is a legendary. Each token unit create enters play. Each token unit you create enters play ready. And on attack, if a unit left play this phase, create a clone trooper token. Clone trooper tokens are, of course, 2-2s with the clone Republic and trooper traits. I think Palpatine is potentially really scary for a token-based deck because having things interplay ready is just really, really strong in Star Wars Unlimited as a whole. And Palpatine can enable that with a lot of cards um at least uh at least if we indeed see a lot of cards that are worth playing that create those clone trooper tokens and for that matter his ability works with droids too if you happen to have some cards that are splashed in out of aspect or just uh cards that aren't villainy or you know let's say you're running palpatine in a separatist deck uh that could that could work fine you know you could be running both droids and clones so some interesting combinations there the fact that he does have the republic and official traits i think uh inclines him towards a deck that has other republic cards which are mostly heroism but you know doesn't have to be necessarily we did see people playing regional governor for instance which is an imperial in uh some rebel builds in set one and it'll be interesting to see where palpatine ends up Okay, Soldier of the 501st, next up, one cost aggression heroism ground unit, one three with the Republican clone and trooper traits and raid one. This unit gets plus one power while attacking. So that is going to allow uh, the Soldier of the 501st to hit for two. And this is, I think, a potentially good early aggro unit. 1-3 isn't the best stat line in the world, but the fact that it's on a one-cost unit means that, you know, if you play this and you play R2 or something, or you play this and you play, you know, a one-cost 2-2, two -two, uh, you can potentially be sort of flooding the board, and having 3 HP does help you against some things that would otherwise pick you off easily, and having raid 1 lets you hit a little harder as well. So overall, I think there's a good chance this will be seeing some play, especially if those trait synergies end up being strong obviously a smaller unit that you don't necessarily want to be playing in the late game but if you have a coordinate based deck just getting more units on the board could be an effective strategy and having good cheap units like this i think is going to maybe help out Anakin's Interceptor, where the fun begins. This is a two-cost aggression heroism space unit, 2-3, Jedi Republic vehicle and fighter traits. While your base has 15 or more damage on it, this unit gets plus two power. So two for a 2-3 in space with relevant traits is already good. We see people playing Alliance X-Wing in some of these uh, some of these rebel decks, which is just a two-cost 2-3 two, vanilla. Anakin's Interceptor is a two-cost 2-3 two, that also has the uh, Jedi trait and it has Republic instead of Rebel. And while your base has 15 or more damage, on it this unit gets plus two power going up to four three is that's pretty legitimate if you ask me four three um at that at four three for two is very 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 strong so if you play this early and it stays alive or even if you draw it late and play it late it might have some extra relevance especially in a racing scenario and i think that uh that means this is probably going to be a pretty solid card Bold Resistance, three cost, aggression, heroism, uh, event, choose up to three units that share the same trait. Each of those units gets plus two power for this phase. Um, this is an interesting card. In theory, it is three for plus six total power, which could be really good if you get the right the situation, but I think it's going to be quite conditional. First off, because how often do you have three units that share the same trait that are all going to get a chance to attack? Or other, all, or maybe, you know, one or two of them are just going to attack, another one's going to be attacked, and the stats are going to be useful in all cases. I think it's not going to happen that often. So the potential upside is very high. And the question for me is just how often will you get the full upside? And I think the answer is not that often. But I could be wrong. And I do note that um, we this is the set that has tokens as a big mechanic. And if we see mass token generation, that could be just what you need to get uh, max value out of bold resistance and buff up, you know, buff up three clone troopers or three battle droids and hit the opponent hard. Stan Hill, Chairman of the Banking Clan, 6 cost cunning villainy ground unit, 3 7 separatist official, exploit 3 when playing this card, defeat up to 3 units you control. This card costs 2 less for each unit defeated this way. And on attack for each friendly unit that was defeated this phase, ready a friendly resource. Um, this guy is really interesting. He potentially represents quite a lot of value. So you can play him with exploit in theory for 0. And on attack, his ability to ready resources synergizes with exploit because friendly units that are defeated by exploit count for this ability. So he can potentially generate quite a lot of value. The main downside for him is that his stats for cost are bad, but I think the idea is that you're going to be using exploit to play him more cheaply than his six cost. And if you play him for four, 
you know, if you, if you play, play him for four, his stats are actually quite good at that level. And if you play him for two or zero, his stats are amazing at that point. So like many exploit units, a big element of Sand Hill here is whether or not you're going to be able to find uh, the battle droid token generation or other mechanisms to fuel exploit and allow you to get that value. If you're playing him for his base price, not great. But if you're playing him more cheaply, he could be pretty sweet. And if you can find a way to ambush him in at the same time, that on attack ability could give you a bunch of your resources back. You know, you could potentially do, let's say you do exploit two. Uh, so as you sacrifice two battle droids, reduce his cost to two, ambush him in, and you've just had two battle droids defeated. So you ready those two resources and essentially get this guy for free. That seems pretty scary to me. And I think there are some, some, uh, potentially quite strong plays we could see with him. In general, things that manipulate your resources in a positive way are pretty good in this game. So I think that, I think there's definitely some room for this guy to, uh, for this guy to put up some big results. Try Droid Suppressor. Next up, this is a uh, seven. This is a seven cost. Um, it is four seven exploit two. When playing this card, defeat up to two units you control. This card costs two less for each unit defeated this way. When played, exhaust an enemy ground unit. Separatist Droid Vehicle and Walker. So, how good is this? Eh, hard to say. Uh, I think the fact that it gets to exhaust an enemy ground unit when you play it doesn't say non-leader, so this could potentially exhaust the opponent's leader on the turn they deploy. Could be pretty sweet. I'm going to repeat what I was just saying for Sand Hill, though. I think like a lot of exploit units, this one is probably not going to be at its best when it's played for its base cost. But once you start bringing that cost down via exploit, it's looking a lot more reasonable. So are you going to have the cheap units or battle droids or whatever it is to enable that, those exploit uh, those exploit payoffs? Well, you know, we'll have to see. But I think I think this does have some potential. It has like if you're playing it for five or for three, it has not only some disruption, but actually some kind of scary stats afterwards words a four seven for five is pretty reasonable and a four seven for three is amazing so you know depends on whether or not you're going to be enabling exploit political pressure one cost cunning event choose an opponent they may discard a random card from their hand if they don't create two battle droid tokens okay so first off the elephant in the room is that opponents choice cards are generally considered bad in general opponents choice cards are a lot worse than they look because you will get the worst of the two effects if you're playing against a good opponent and yeah maybe your opponent chooses the wrong effect that's totally possible but if you assume that your opponent is not going to make a mistake you're going to get the worst the worst of the two versions so we've seen this with um We've seen this with I Am Your Father. The damage from I Am Your Father is amazing for its cost. The card draw from I Am Your Father is very strong for its cost, but it doesn't matter in a sense because you'll always get the worse one. And as a result, I Am Your Father has ended up being kind of a niche card, though it has seen some play in some hard removal type decks. Um, political pressure... I think so either the opponent loses a random card from their hand or you get two battle droid tokens. Uh, the main issue with this is like, let's say your opponent has one card in hand and it's really important. You play political pressure on them. They just give you two battle droids. Um, and other discard effects, like f even force throw, I've had situations where playing force throw with no force unit on the board is still a really good play because it gets rid of that last card that the opponent's been keeping for the right scenario. Political pressure isn't going to do that. But, you know, maybe one for creating two battle dreads is good enough that you consider it to be worth it. I think the trick to getting a lot of value out of these types of cards is to create scenarios where both effects are very good for you. So if you have a scenario where your opponent losing a card is really good and creating two battle dreads is good, this could be quite a strong card. Both effects are probably worth more than one. But like I was saying, your opponent will be giving you the worst version of those. So, you know, we'll see. We'll see how popular this one ends up being. Private Manufacturing, two-cost generic event, no aspects. Draw two cards. If you control no token units, put two cards from your hand on the bottom of your deck in any order. I think this card is actually very good. So right now we've seen Mission Briefing, which is a three-cost event that draws two cards, and it basically doesn't see play. Private Manufacturing, though, is a two-cost event that draws two cards, and that is a big difference. Now, uh, the downside if you don't have those token units, you have to then put two cards from your hand on the bottom of your deck in any order. If they're not random cards, so you could still play this and use it for filtering to try to find those key cards off the top of the deck, but it's not going to be anywhere near as strong as if you control a token unit and have the ability to use private manufacturing and just gain two cards. And if... if <coughs> Sorry about that, guys. 
If tokens are prevalent enough in set three and they look to be a pretty major mechanic, I think a card like this could be quite strong. Watt Tambor, Techno Union Foreman. He is a command villainy leader. As an action, he can exhaust. If a friendly unit was defeated this phase, give a unit plus two, plus two for this phase. And when he deploys, he is a 3-6, and on attack, if a friendly unit was defeated this phase, you may give another unit plus two, plus two for this phase. So basically the same ability on uh, same ability on both sides, worded slightly differently. Um, the main issue here, because he says another unit, you won't be able to use his on attack ability to buff himself, which is really pretty unfortunate for Watt Tambor. I think if he were able to buff himself, he would be much stronger, but you know, maybe too strong because then you have a leader that's swinging as a 5-8 if you had a friendly unit get defeated, and that would be really rather powerful. Um, as it stands, we'll have to see insofar as this set successfully creates wide board scenarios, which I know has been, uh, you know, that, that is one of the objectives of the set. So we'll see whether or not they succeed in doing it. If you do have a wide board buffing one of your other units, uh, when you lose a, when you lose an initial one, seems like a good way to get some value. The main issue being this is kind of a clunky ability because it is, it's not a reaction, it's an action. And as a result of that, it's, it's kind of creating a situation where you're, where you lose some tempo and the opponent has a chance to react. Nevertheless, Nevertheless, if you have a wide board, I think an ability like this represents a lot of potential value. So the question is just how reliably will you be able to achieve that? Admiral Trench holding the line. Seven cost command villainy ground unit. Five five separatist official with exploit one. And when played, return up to three units that were defeated this phase from your discard pile to your hand. So I think the dream with this is that you play this via exploit and then you get the units that you exploited back. Um... I believe, and I believe that works. Um, and there, are, you can also use it with other units that have been wiped out earlier in the turn. The main downside with this is that I believe tokens do not go to your discard pile. And so because tokens don't go to your discard pile and the most natural use of exploit is with those battle droid tokens, there's a bit of an anti-synergy here with Admiral Trench where it strikes me that the things that you most want to use to enable exploit then don't work with his ability, which is pretty unfortunate. Now, that being said, if you have some cheap fodder type units that are not tokens, you can return them with Admiral Trench. So we might see him doing well with, you know, units like that, the Battle Droid Swarm or, or whatever that's called, the uh, the one that, that is going to be part of the Grievous Starter, where it's like a it's a three cost one one, but it creates a Battle Droid and when defeated you get another Battle Droid. Well, you could play that. You could play Admiral Trench, use Exploit to clear out that unit, giving you another Battle Droid, and then bring, bring, this, uh, bring that back to hand, potentially play it for even more Battle Droids in future turns. And if you've lost some other units, you could be bringing some of those back as well. So overall, I think... I'm a little worried just because of the anti-synergy there with the normal battle droid tokens, but I do think that you, Admiral Trench at least conceivably represents a lot of value. It is also worth noting that we've seen the card, uh, the Emperor's Legion, see some play. So let's see here. I'll just search for Legion. That's going to be easier. Yeah, so the Emperor's Legion is a two-cost command villainy event. Return each unit in your discard pile that was defeated this phase to your hand. And this has seen some play, especially as a potential counter card to a, uh, you know, to things like Super Laser Blaster, Overwhelming Barrage, and Admiral Trench, or uh, General, yeah, yeah, Admiral Trench, Admiral Trench represents a kind of similar effect because usually you're not seeing more than three units getting defeated in a turn. So this guy not only brings a 5 5 body to the table, but can also potentially bring some of those other units back to hand for later use. Ahsoka Tano, always ready for trouble. Three cost, cunning heroism ground unit. Uh, she is a 3-4 with the Force Jedi and Republic traits. While you control fewer units than an opponent, including this unit, this unit gains ambush. And as an action, you can spend two resources to return this unit and each upgrade on her to their owner's hands. So Ahsoka can potentially hit, like, let's say your opponent has a uh, has more units than you. You play Ahsoka, and they still outnumber you even just by one. Now Ahsoka is a 3-cost, three 3-4 three, ambush, which is incredibly strong, and she can really do some damage to the opponent. She's going to be better in a comeback-type scenario. 
because you are going to be able to get that ambush more reliably and ambush is a very strong keyword the action allowing you to return her to your hand potentially allows you to set up another for, uh, future ambush you could use that um you could use that to get out of a tough situation or you could even use that where you're like oh you know i think she's going to be defeated soon i'm going to return her to hand and just resource her for the future i don't have much else to do with these resources and it's going to give me some card advantage so i think the ambush side is more exciting than the return side at least to me right now but it'll be interesting to see how this develops i do think she suffers a little bit from three cost three four no longer being a good stat line um in set one three cost three four was pretty reasonable but we've now seen enough three cost three fives that it is no longer really that good if you are not getting the ambush value in my opinion though it is worth noting that ahsoka does have the force jedi and republic traits which are really strong and we could be seeing things like maybe you're playing a uh, an aggression cunning heroism deck all of a sudden that deck can start running force throw and supporting it pretty reliably in the past force throw has mostly only been in blue red decks but now a cunning deck uh, could potentially be playing, you know, let's say you have Grogu, Ahsoka Tano, and Ezra. Those are all relatively cheap Jedi cards or Force cards that you could be using to uh, land those Force throws with the damage enabled, even from a pretty early point in the game. And so that trait synergy does mean Ahsoka has some extra value there. Overall, I think she will be pretty strong, but she won't be insane. I think if she were printed in set one, she would seem extremely, extremely strong. But given how things have shifted since then, I think she She's going to be quite good, but by no means the best. Well, yeah, and we'll have to see. Next up, Jar Jar Binks, Foolish Gungan. Two cost ground unit, double cunning, two three with the Gungan trait, and on attack deal two damage to a random unit or base. Um, so, look, some people hate this card. Okay, look, it's a card for Jar Jar Binks. It has goofy art, and it has a goofy random effect. To me, that is so thematically accurate to the character of Jar Jar Binks. I think this is totally fitting. And is this a good card? Let's be real. In my opinion, it's terrible. I, I do not want to play a card that has this degree of randomness and uncertainty and unreliability. It's just not how I like to play these games. But you might have that game where Jar Jar Binks randomly hits just the right targets and has a great impact. He's potentially very impactful for a two-cost unit. The problem is that impact might be against your side of the board instead of your opponent's if you don't get lucky on that random damage. And... Is this going to be a good card? To be honest, I don't think so. But is this going to be a funny and thematic card? Yeah, absolutely. And I, I, I was, I was happy to see this. Um, I think. You know, I'm not sure how often I'll see it in tournaments. Maybe there's going to be some randomness manipulation stuff in the future that allows you to make this more reliable, at which point this is a very scary on attack ability. But as long as it stays actually random, I think this is not necessarily something that you want to run uh, under normal circumstances because you just don't have the control over it that you would want. Morgan Elspeth, Keeper of Mini Secrets. She is a four-cost Vigilance Villainy Ground Unit. 3-6 Force Imperial Official. Restore one, and on attack, you may defeat another friendly unit if you do draw a card. So four for a 3-6 is not at all bad. Um, that Those are on-curve stats. Restore one is nice. The Force trait is very strong, and her on attack ability could be quite relevant here, especially with ways to create cheap battle droids and the like, and generate some card advantage from a weaker unit being defeated. And you can, of course, also use this to enable when defeated effects so i think in the right deck morgan elspeth could be very strong indeed we'll have to see exactly how that pans out but overall i'm fairly optimistic on this one hoggle the lesser arc duke of the stalgazin hive i believe this and my apologies if i pronounced that wrong um and so this guy is really interesting. He is a two-cost cunning uh, command villainy, one-four ground unit, separatist official. When you play another unit, you may exhaust this unit if you do create a battle droid token. I think this is actually quite strong. So Poggle the Lesser potentially represents quite a bit of value in the course of an extended game. Because let's say you play this guy on turn one. He's a one-four, so he's annoying to deal with. A lot of early units will not actually clear him. But if your opponent doesn't clear him, turn two, you play a unit, exhaust Poggle, now you have a battle droid. And you can just keep doing that and generating a lot of value. He's an official, so he works with Emperor's Royal Guard. I think that overall, he potentially represents a lot of value and a lot of like really annoying basic stuff that you can... Uh, that you can 
can get on the field. Another note is that I think in an Emperor Palpatine deck, he could be very strong indeed because those battle droids that he creates are perfect fodder for Emperor Palpatine's ability, allowing you to potentially pay to defeat those, deal damage to an opposing unit, and draw a card. So then he would be potentially representing some card advantage uh, and some extra value out of those free tokens. I think this guy is going to be quite a strong early play. The main downside is that he has non-aggressive stats, so in a situation where you're defending against aggro, this isn't really what you want, but in a scenario where you are trying to generate a lot of value in the course of a longer game, I think he could be a star. All right, that's going to, I believe, do it for this batch of previews. Thanks to you guys for watching here. And I want to uh, I want to plug another thing that I had going on on the channel today. So earlier I was part of a live stream of one of the first planetary qualifier events to be held. And I was commentating on, uh, I was commentating throughout the event. We did seven rounds of Swiss and then a cut to top eight. So 10 total rounds. I was commenting through that with various co-casters live. And uh, you can check out the VODs of that. I'm going to put a link in the description below to the McClunky Gaming Twitch channel where all of this was going on. I would recommend checking that out if you want to see some streamed and commentated matches of early competitive play in Star Wars Unlimited. All right, that's going to do it for this one, guys. Thanks to you all for watching, and we'll be back later with some more Star Wars Unlimited TCG material. Thanks for watching.